Oh no, do you guys know what I just realized? Today is Stream Recap 69. I know people in my comments have been looking forward to it. Good morning, good morning. It's a curse day, fellas, because I have a bad headache. So I don't even know how long the stream will be today, so I apologize. But we're here to run back and forth in grass, so it can't be too hard. We're here to shiny hunt. We're here to talk about a few things, see what's up to date with Pokemo, what's going on in the game. You know, how are people doing? What are people, what are the goals? You know, when are raids coming out? Everybody wants to know. You know, we don't really know yet. We're just waiting for any more information. As soon as we get information on upcoming raids, I'll do a video on that, of course. But other than that, dude, good morning, good morning, guys. How are we doing? I'm going to be hitting 50,000 encounters today, which is a pretty cool milestone. And then I do have something to talk about mildly uh, in terms of, like, the market. and I guess In terms of my decisions, actually, because I am starting to slowly, slowly sell off. Some investments. I'm really bad about selling off investments. I feel like I hold on to them for way too long. Um, but I have started to slowly, slowly, slowly. Don't panic. I sold off 10 Kobans, okay? If you're a Koban diamonds hand holder, you know, whatever. Don't go panic sell your Kobans. I sold off 10. I still have 67. Um, I just, I bought them for 20K, dude. I bought them for 18, 20K a piece. So with them being at, I sold all those ones for 75k, with them being at 75k, 80k, like it was just too much, it was too much to, to not profit on and to not slightly dip out, you know, so let's actually like run over the math, so if I bought 77 of them for 20k a piece, that means I spent 1.5 mil or so into Kobans, right, and if there's 75k a piece right now, obviously 75k times 77 would be a huge you know, that's like a five times Pokéen increase, which is really, really lucky, especially with like two years or a year or two. Let's do the, uh, but if I sold 10 of them for 77, or sorry, 10 of them for 75k a piece, which is what I did, I made 750k. So I made about half my initial investment by only selling off like a few of them. So I wanted to go ahead and make a small move on that. What happens if someone rejects your PvP and they are holding a legendary Pokemon? Someone, if they're holding one of the King of the Hill style legendaries, like the Mewtwo or stuff like that, they physically cannot reject your PvP request. It is forcefully accepted. It's kind of interesting you bring that up. I haven't, we haven't really talked about, like, I, we haven't talked about the King of the Hill style legendaries in so long because it's all about, you know, rotating legendaries now, the beasts, the Kanto birds. It's kind of cool to see someone show some interest and bring up the, the King of the Hill style legendaries, which only one person can own at a time. Uh, how do you change shoe color now that the customization kit is gone? I'm pretty sure if you go talk to, there's like an NPC in every single uh, PC now, but I'm pretty sure if you go talk to, you can like change all of your, that's like way easier. I'm pretty sure it's way easier. I'll have to double check at some point, remind me. I'm pretty sure it's easier than ever to like change your base vanities in the game, which is really, really cool. That's honestly a really good call that I don't recommend enough. Fluffle, catching alphas, if you're a new player to Pokemon, mode, going to try to catch alphas is definitely worth it. It's obviously gonna be kind of difficult, but at least they level scale, right? They do level scale, and as long as you have like some, I would get some timer balls. Any new player can just stall out against a uh, an alpha, right? And use timer balls. If you're like super new, like only have like one region, maybe two regions done, honestly going for alphas early on is pretty good. Uh, I've just started playing. Why is everyone buying all those berries you have on your O key? Or my key at Q? Those are called Lepa berries. Lepa berries are crucial for shiny hunting. Um, so certain spots, are, the main loop of shunting in Pokemon is generally uh, popping Sweet Scent, which is my three hot key as well. So you pop Sweet Scent and that gives you a horde of Pokemon, which like different routes have different hordes of Pokemon. It'll either be like a times three horde or a times five horde or sometimes even like a single encounter. Uh, you can technically hoard for single encounters, which is kind of funny. Um, but Lepas allow you to refresh your PP so you can kind of infinitely keep... Um, you can infinitely keep, uh, what's it called? Like, just popping sweet sense, essentially. And certain, like, locations for certain shiny hunts are so far from a PC that you kind of... Lepa's kind of become a quasi-requirement, is the way to think about it. Is it bad that I'm shiny hunting before finishing one region? Not at all. I am a huge encourager of, like, dude, play the game how you want to, for sure, right? Like, which is pretty obvious, but, like, definitely, if you enjoy... If you're a grinder, you're, like, an MMO player, absolutely, please enjoy, like, shiny hunting. Whenever you feel the urge to shiny hunt, you should pretty much always take advantage of that, you know? That's kind of the best way to, like, really keep like how do i stay motivated and stuff and how do i do all these shunts really just taking advantage of the urge when i have it and then pushing through when i don't is like the tldr but obviously it's a lot more complicated or easier to say than do uh, but if you have the urge to shunt dude absolutely just go do it if, if you have access to the locations right getting all the regions done just gives you access it gives you more locations for more shiny hunts how do you feel about hard scale farming it's probably one of the most like probably one of the money making methods that i need to test the most um I hear a lot of people that swear by it, and it's changed a lot. There's been a lot of um, balancing changes regarding hard scales over the past like six months or so. They adjusted the rate at which they at which you got them, and then they got rid of 
uh, mushrooms, the mushroom tutor. So now hard scales are the only item used to actually relearn moves. So then hard scales went from like two to 3K up to like 8K a piece. Uh, their value has increased a lot and they also readjusted the rate at which you get them per hour. So hard scales have been affected a lot and are now like the main item, the main part of the economy to re relearn moves, which is constantly required for PVP uh, and even for PVM. It's really, really powerful. It's good to remember that like with relearning moves, not only can you relearn moves that you've previously learned, you can also relearn moves that you haven't learned yet that you would learn in the future. So for example, uh, you don't get eruption on Typhlosion until level 82. You could technically uh, use hard scales to relearn eruption at level 36 or whenever, I guess, as soon as you have the Typhlosion, you could always relearn eruption on it, even though you don't get it until, you know, level 82, which is like, this is a really powerful move. Um, so it's good to keep that in mind. So what are mushrooms for now? Are they just in the game for the tutor? Mushrooms kind of got gutted, which is like, it's good and bad, right? Because you're like, I had a bunch of mushrooms. You know, I was definitely with someone who was affected by it. I think I might have sold them off now, but... At the same time, I didn't have that many. I have a fair bit, but like at the same time, it could have been way worse. Um, it kind of needed. It was one of those things where like it needed to happen for the future of the game, because the issue was when mushrooms and heart scales were both used for relearning moves, neither of them gained any value. So there was just no reason to ever like farm mushrooms or farm heart scales. There was way too many in the game and both of them were really bad money making. And there was just, it was also like just too cheap to like relearn moves. It was just bad for the economy. It was better to get rid of one of them and just have one be the main focus. All right, here it is, 50K encounters. It's just cool to get those on a site there as well. Kind of neat. Just cool to hit those milestones, even if they don't really mean anything ios band wave yes that's it good there was an dude they do they usually do bands in band waves 100 and there recently was an ios band wave i saw a lot of people in my discord saying that they either got banned rightfully or banned falsely or whatever um there has been an ios band wave so uh, if you th believe you were falsely banned just always make an appeal it's pretty common that like those get appealed and reversed pretty quickly um some people are saying that like a new ios update might be being picked up as macro i don't know if that's true it might just be people who were actually macro and coping out of responsibility you never really know um my tldr with that kind of stuff if someone because like i always say you know 99 point not sorry 99 percent of people who get banned are probably actually guilty and one percent are actually innocent but 100 percent of people claim they didn't do it so that 99 percent ends up fucking the one percent and i don't want to assume one way or the other so my general response to someone getting banned is usually you know what i'm really fucking sorry to hear that even if you did break the rules i mean it's sad to see someone lose an account um if you if you are guilty, I hope you stay banned and, you know, tank your punishment. And if you aren't guilty, if you're innocent, I really hope you get unbanned. That's all I can really say and wish people the best, you know. Is Blue Striped Bastillon shiny rare? Yes, it actually is. Um, at one point, Blue Striped Bastillon was like top three or like one of the rarest shinies in all of Pokemon, which is really funny. Uh, at least in terms of quantity that exists, right? Because technically, uh, for Blue Striped... Blah, blah, blah. Blue Stripe Bastillon Shiny, you could just go get Blue Stripe Bastillon and breed it, and it's like a normal egg shiny, but who wants to egg breed and spend, you know, 2,000 hours, 120 mil on a uh, on a shiny Bastillon, right? The reason why it's so rare is because for a long time, Blue Stripe Bastillon was only achievable via Phenos, so you would only ever, you could only ever get it in the wild as a shiny via Phenos, which is obviously super hyper rare, right? Phenomena, right? Um, now, to be fair, I was going to say, here's a good example. They actually added, I think it was with the release of Johto, funnily enough. They actually added a new way to just encounter it in the wild without, um, without what's it called? Without Finos. So now Blue Stripe Bastion is not nearly as rare, but previously when it was only found via Finos and it was Red Stripe Bastion everywhere else, Blue Stripe Bastion was at one point one of the rarest shinies of the game, which is kind of funny. It was very, very few of them that existed. Do you think it would be cool for Pokemon to take a page from RuneScape and implement farming slash fishing skills slash capes? You don't get anything for the levels except at max you get some sort of fashion gear. I mean, I would love that personally. Do I think it's better for the game? That's probably up for quote. Probably not. But like, I, I, I just like skills. Like as a selfish MMO player, I just enjoy stealing and stuff like those like monotonous grinds. But is it really better for the game? Does it make the game better? Probably not. But that'd be up for the community vote, you know? Hey, Pat, have you completed your alpha decks? I personally have not. And there's not really a reason to do it aside from like completionist goals. Because um, 
there's not even like really you don't get number one you don't get a reward for completing your, your alpha pokedex number two it doesn't actually prove that you actually went and caught them all in the wild you can get your alpha pokedex by just buying the pokemon and breeding them so it really just becomes like a pay to win thing it's kind of like buying like a non-ot shiny um you could just go like if you have fungus caught ot in your pokedex you could go buy an alpha mungus or a mungus breed it down and that will come out your ot and it will trigger that that doesn't work for like any other pokemon but it's if you it's if it's you only have if you already have that pokemon that species caught ot you can also get the alpha if that makes sense do you ever reference your own videos for stuff you forgot yes i'm pretty sure when i made when i had to make my water spout blast toys for my recent advanced jimmy run team i watched my own video for that 100 percent I, I i there are times it sounds very dumb but it's true there are times where i forget little details where i will watch my own video to, to get the information because you can't, you can't remember you can't remember everything off the top of your head you know if they ever add Gen 6, what are you looking forward to the most? Definitely just like the new species of Pokemons and new shiny variants, right? Like shiny Mega Gengar would be, would give get, would give me a reason to go hunt shiny Gengar, you know? And then um, just, I really like, I don't even know what Gen I really like Avalog. I don't know. I know it's Gen 6 Plus. I don't know if it's Gen 6. I love Halucha. There are like a lot of Gen 6 Plus Pokemon that I really like that I would love to be able to shiny hunt. Um, I, I would love to see Gen 6 Plus in Pokemon one day, just implemented in a balanced way. That's all I ask. Will the legendaries ever have their hidden abilities added? I think it's been kind of talked about and teased about with the upcoming permanent addition of raids. They've kind of talked about legendaries being a possible reward from them and specifically hidden ability access legendaries. So it's I think it's very possible. I'm not I'm not even familiar enough with traditional legendary like hidden abilities. I don't even know which which of them would be super strong. I'm honestly not not familiar. Dude, I'm gonna be honest, Cav, I haven't even thought about that. Raids will probably be the primary way for them to introduce more Generation 5 Alphas due to the lack of sprites. Definitely see some legendary raids getting added though to have, I didn't even think about the sprite issue. That is really interesting. Um, Good call. Yeah, maybe, dude. That's, I, I like that theory craft a lot. I actually kind of don't like that secret shiny breeding only requires one of the Pokemon to be secret shiny because that means you can fudge secret shiny, right? So if I have like a shiny Rapidash, right? Like just an OT shitty shiny Rapidash, I can go buy a secret shiny Rapidash off the GTL, breed that with my Rapidash, and then make my non-shiny horde achieve shiny Rapidash a secret shiny. Like you can you can fudge secret shiny essentially, which is a big deal. Um, it seems deep. I don't I don't know for sure, but. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like you should have to have gotten a wild secret shiny and then breed that with a secret shiny to keep it. Yeah, that I don't know. But maybe that'd be maybe that's too specific. Maybe that would make secret shinies like too insane. I'm not sure. I have to think about that. I don't. I don't have a full on opinion about it, but it is strange to me. You can like fudge secret shiny like that. Is Pokemon increasing in pop popularity right now? I would say absolutely 100%. Um, this has been talked about a lot. We've been having server queues to get into the game during an off, quote unquote, off season for the game. So the game right now, seemingly, we don't really know exact numbers, but it seemingly is as popular during an off season as the game was previous, like a year or two ago during its peak seasons. Like it's, it's increased in popularity so much so that its off seasons are reaching the levels that the peak seasons used to get um, over the past year or two. It's pretty and it makes sense they've been updating the game more over the past two years than they previously did for the past 10 like the past two years of updates have been a lot people coming from other games or other MMOs it may not feel like that like Pokemon may still be like a slowishly updated game in the, in the general stream of things general scheme of things which is fair but like dude, there were periods where we didn't see updates for like a year or two or like three years like we there was there were times where there was a huge huge droughts of content back in the day and I'm, I'm just used to that um yeah we've seen more updates over the past two years than ever it's been and it's been paying off for them and hopefully it can just kind of snowball and, and teach more people about this pretty cool game in my opinion this is actually a fun little tip slash trick one of the only reasons to watch global chat in my opinion is during catch events it actually really helps to get information it doesn't really factor in but it kind of it's just like good to know we get that information in during catch events people will like link their catches in global chat to kind of flex a little bit so like if someone gets like a 160 right they, they'll probably like link it in global chat and be like oh like you know i might win and if you have like a 162 keep that private don't show global chat just like keep it a secret and then wait to like submit it because i feel like more people some people will like hunt a little harder you know like some people will like play a little faster if they if they think they can win or um 
or if that person with the 160 thinks that they already won because they didn't see anybody else with a higher one in global chat they may slow down a little bit and play a little less efficiently so i i feel like it's it's good to like watch global chat and get that information when people do link stuff but if you want to go for peak efficiency and go for the win technically you should keep it private but it's really not that big of a deal either at the end of the day so whatever but it's a cool thing to keep in mind during catch events this is a great, a great, a great, a great question, Locke. I'd like some tips. What do you think is the best strat for fish and catch events, sticky hold or synchronize? Besides that, anything else I can do, increase odds. There's no like definitive proof that I've seen of like, which is better. I usually stick to whatever strategy lets you catch more Pokemon. I like the extra dice rolls than the like synchronize, um, increasing your chance of like plus five, right? Like I feel like going sticky hold and just catching way more Pokemon is going to do you more, more good and get you a better chance at winning from my personal experience. I don't have data on this. I don't, I haven't tested or we have done studies, right? Lol. Um, I like stuff that gives you more encounters versus synchronizing to get that plus five, or that increased nature bonus for catch events. I haven't talked about catch events in a while, nor have I done them on this channel, but they're very, very good. Uh, it's, it actually, I really try to encourage catch events, especially like during off season, because you have more time to do them and stuff. Catch events are a really good way to make Poke in and also just have that chance at an overarching prize with the shiny prize or six times 31 or whatever it is. Also, catch events give you a good reason to like prepare certain Pokemon, like having multiple catching Pokemon or having like synchronized Pokemon. One of the main reasons you would want that is for, uh, for catch events. I love catch events, I just never win them. It took, dude, it took me like 100 to like 120 estimated catch events participated in before winning one. It's just the odds of you winning a catch event are just very, 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 like it's just, it's very low. Um, it's very, very low, but they're very, it's, if you can ever, what, if you can even place like third or above and it's very, very cool. And um, there's always that chance. There's always that chance. Dude, Roy, getting a three times 31 shiny as your first shiny is insane. Congratulations, dude. Um, for those that don't know, like what's the odds of that? I'm pretty sure it's one out of like a thousand or something, or what's the math on, here, we can actually look it up. How rare is a, how rare is a three times 31 in Pokemon? I'm pretty sure it's around one out of 1K. I have a video that breaks down the math, actually. Let me check it out. This is a perfect example of me scrolling through my own video for a piece of information. Um, so 3 times 31, the odds of that happening are 1 out of 1,802. So 1 out of 1,800, right? Um, to be fair, for a shiny, you would knock that down to 2 times 31 because the 1 times 31 is guaranteed. So it actually become the 2 times 31 rate, technically. So the odds of getting a 3 times 31 wild shiny is 1 out of 78. So... For your first shiny, like that's you have to catch 78 shinies on average to get a one, uh, a three times 31 shiny. So to get one on your first is very, very impressive. Like, I, I have gotten one three times 31 shiny, um, in the wild, right? And I have like 36 to 37 shinies. So even I've been lucky on it. Like, I'm lucky on it. But let alone your first, that's super sick, dude. Congratulations. Uh, what's your next shunt gonna be? I get this question a lot, and my honest answer is I try not to think about it too much. I mean, I have a huge list of shinies that i want to hunt i have plenty of options but in terms of what i go to from like spot to spot or whatever i just kind of go with the flow man i think it's like some of my shunts especially like this one like this shunt is so long that like i don't even want to worry about what's next right I'll, I'll get to that when i when it comes to it and i kind of just take it one shunt at a time you know i have a full list of options but in terms of which one i'll go to in which order kind of up for grabs uh do you think pokemon will ever get an update and get an, a built-in encounter counter i think so the, the devs have talked about it i that's one of those things i think the devs are pretty good about knowing what the players want but they don't seem to in my opinion i feel like an encounter counter is like a really desired thing by a lot of players but from what the way they've talked about it on the forums they don't seem to think it's like that wanted um i feel like an encounter counter is like a really really desired like really wanted thing from pretty much like 90% maybe 80% of players that's my perception and I obviously just see people who are like I mean my perception is going to be is obviously going to be biased because I see people who are like are already interested in the game enough to want to go above beyond like go watch a content creator so I try to learn about it so odds are those people are going to care more and are going to want to encounter kind of even more um but I don't know it seems like a very very wanted thing to me all right, but anyways, fellas, that is where I'm going to call it today. I honestly ended up streaming way longer than I expected today, almost reaching four hours, which is pretty cool. Hopefully, there was some informative stuff, hopefully some helpful stuff, maybe some good background entertainment, something to add some positivity to your day. Thank you guys so much for watching. I super, super, super appreciate it. Thank you so much. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Dislike if not. 
subscribe to the channel for daily Pokemon videos. Follow the Twitch for streams. I'll be live tomorrow. I stream Monday through Thursday at 12 p.m. ET. Discord's down below. And if you want to go above and beyond and support the content, YouTube memberships, Twitch Prime, Twitch subs, and PayPal slash Venmo help out tremendously. Thank you all very much. Have a great day. I'll see you guys later. And hopefully your shiny luck is better than mine and my current hunt. Good luck, guys. Peace, peace, peace. Yo, what's up? I just want to quickly say thank you so much for watching the entire video. That's very, very cool of you. And it's even cooler for all of these people to go above and beyond and support my content. I couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much again.